lovely comparator. So as you guys know, I'm not very good at this kind of electronic stuff, but I'm trying to get better at it. And as I'm building my final year project, I'm trying to make a solar charge controller. And one of the things that the whole big uh, schematics that I've seen online include are these lovely comparators. So here I have, let's see if I can show you. There we go, we've got a TL071CP. So this IC is just a TL071. This is a comparator. What's interesting is that like, I learned about these in my second year and I didn't know that this looks like this. <laughs> like this is an IC, right? I know that this is an IC, but that's the comparator and this is this, which is cool, right? So anyways, this is the circuit that we're gonna be going through today. I'll explain it, but first we'll touch on what a comparator is. I'm gonna do this in a very basic way. So, you know, forgive me for you professionals out there, but this is just for noobs like me, basically. Third year electrical engineering students that don't know anything. So comparators, the way that this circuit works is if I connect now this voltage into here, when the voltage from this battery here, which is currently 7.5 volts, is higher than the input voltage here, which is currently four volts. So as you can see there, four volts. So when this voltage here, which is 7.5 volts, is higher than that four volts there, then the LED turns on. When the voltage here, which is the input voltage, is no longer higher, then that LED will turn off. There you go, gone. And so when that voltage then becomes higher again, the LED turns on. It's actually a very nice circuit. And I mean, I didn't understand how this works at all, but now I do, so let's go through it. So we'll first touch on comparators. I should really give a shout out to where I got this diagram from. This website is amazing. It's electronics dash or electronics dash tutorials dot ws. You guys have probably already been on this website. They're a phenomenal website. And to be honest, they have a really good explanation of comparators. And I would suggest they go into way more detail than I'm going to go into it here in this video. So if you're into reading, check that out. I prefer videos, so that's why I do this. Now, with comparators, you've got two inputs, the voltage in and the voltage reference. Those are just the two inputs. They're like inverting and non-inverting. Don't worry about it. But just two inputs, voltage in and V reference. So all we're doing is we're comparing two voltages. Now, no current flows into these inputs, so this just has a really, really high uh, resistance. So there is no current that's coming into these two inputs, just voltage, right? So it's just sensing the voltage. So based upon these two inputs, which are voltages, right? Then the comparator will then allow current to flow at the output based on the, those two inputs. So if one of these is higher than the other, then no current will flow. If one's higher than the other, then current will flow. And the way that the current's coming in from is from VCC, just normally going through VCC to ground, but then it gets redirected this way to the output. So if I then stick an LED on here, right? If I stick an LED on here onto the output, when, for example, one of these, which we'll go through in a bit, when one of these is higher, then the LED will turn on. So how does it work? you got up here, which again, this, this website here is amazing, man. Check it out. If the voltage at the input, V in here, so this is the uh, non-inverted input. If this voltage is higher than V reference, then V out will go to plus VCC, which means that this will go high, basically. It's going to go up here, as you can see, to plus VCC, okay? So when the voltage at the input is higher, then this will go up. When the voltage at V reference is higher, then V out will go to minus VCC this way, or in my, for my circuit, it will go to zero, it won't allow any current. So you'll get zero amps down here, and up here you'll get like, what, 25 milliamps or something like that. So that's how this works on a more kind of basic level. So let's go back to my circuit. So in order to understand this circuit, you need to understand how the, how the IC works, and the ICs have pinouts, so that's important to know. So here's the pinout for the IC. All right, cool. So basically you just map this one here to here. So the offset, no, don't worry about that. The offset, no, don't worry about that. And not connected, don't worry about that. So pin one, pin five, and pin eight are ignored. So that correlates to, see this yellow, this, not yellow dot. You see this dot here on the IC? That relates to this dot here. You put the IC up this way, like this. And so pin one is not connected. As you can see, I've got pin one not connected to anything. And then pin eight, again, is not connected to anything. And then pin five, again, not connected to anything. So then now we've got our two inputs at pin two and pin three. 
So my first uh, input here, which is my inverting input, this input here, or this one down here, the voltage reference, this is not connected, or this is, sorry, uh, pin two is connected to VCC, which is in my instance, four volts from my power supply. Then the uh, non-inverted input, which is pin three, is connected to my battery, which is the voltage at the input. And then the rest, you just connect um, this pin here to the positive rail, this pin here to negative rail, and then pin six is your output here, which in my instance is going, pin six there is going to the LED. So the LED is on the output pin. So let's show you the schematic. All right, so here's the schematic for the circuit. So at the moment here, we've got our voltage at the input at zero volt. So if I disconnect this, it takes a bit of time, but it turns off. So now when we have zero volts at this input here, oh, <laughs> that's interesting, when I connect my pen, it turns on. I don't even know why that happens actually. If you know why that happens, I mean, th the same thing happens when I put my finger on it as well. I don't know why it's sensitive like that, but to be fair, my lecturer actually said not to touch them with your bare hands, but yeah. Anyway, so we've got zero volts at our voltage input, which is the one that we're comparing to our reference voltage. Then the LED is off. Why? Because V reference is higher than V in, Therefore, we get minus VCC or zero amps in our circuit. So zero amps is not going to turn on my LED. And so you can see here, if you look closely, we've got 89.7 microamps of current here because all of the current is going from the battery, the four volts down and then just to ground. Then as we increase the voltage, as long as we stay below that reference voltage, so you can see here 3.9 volts, versus four volts, the LED will stay off. The current has kind of increased a little bit. We've gone from 89 microamps up to 144 microamps. But regardless, we still don't have current. Our current is still going down through to ground. And so our LED is staying off. The moment we reach four volts, then you can see the LED turns on and we get 6.27 milliamps of current. And so as I increase that voltage, that current increases, but yeah, so here, this comparator, the whole time is just comparing the voltage at the input to the reference voltage. And so this is going to be very important for my solar charger because the comparator is going to be comparing, you know, the voltage at the battery versus the voltage at the solar panel. And so that's why this is very, very useful. And it's definitely in my best interest to understand how this works. So we're comparing the voltage at the input. Let's actually just run through the whole circuit. So we've got our input voltage here connected to the non-inverting input on the comparator and then we've got our reference voltage here four volts connected to the other one so the comparator is constantly comparing here to here so right now we've got zero volts here and four volts here over here we've got 3.9 volts here and four volts here so as long as this reference is higher in both instances here it's higher current is going to go down this way Cool. And then remember, because we don't have any current coming in at these inputs here, then the moment now we get four volts and four volts here. Now this one is no longer higher. They equal. And so then instead of current going this way, it goes this way. And then we get some current going here, which is enough to turn on that LED. And I mean, that's it. That's it's as simple as that. So in the next video, so this would be part one of comparators. In the next video, I'm going to go into a bit more complicated stuff. Um, we're going to start adding some voltage dividers. It's a bit complicated for me. I'm going to learn, learn it, understand it, and then I'll come back to you guys and show you how it works. But I'm really glad that now I understand how comparators work. Hopefully you guys do too. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.